Welcome back. Uh, some of my friends said I need to get the dog in here a little bit more, so there he is. Um, but that's not why I'm here today. What, I'm, uh, what I've got going on today is a misfire on an O2 Chevy Silverado with a 5.3. And this is where he's going to be for the rest of this video, I'm sure. So anyway, here is the... Oh, I lied. He's getting up. <clears throat> Come here. So this is the truck, and if you can tell by the fender, it's not in the greatest of shape, and it is an 18-year-old truck at this point. So here's the issue I ran into. It came in with a misfire, and it had a dead miss. Um, the other day, I don't think it was really misfiring, but today it had a dead miss. But here's the issue. I shouldn't say the issue. This is one of the issues. This little guy right here is an OBD2 uh, diagnostic port. So you would hook your scan tool into there, read the codes, and determine what's going on. This truck has a check engine light. It clearly has a bad enough misfire that the computer should be picking up and telling me which cylinder it is. Because it's got one that is just dead. Now the problem with that OBD2 port is that it does not have power or ground, one of the two. I didn't really test it. But my scan tool will not function on it unless it has a vehicle power source, which it did not. So now I've got the choice of do I fix that OBD2 port or do I go ahead and diagnose this kind of old school. And being the vehicle that it is, I decided to go about it a little bit more old school and if other issues pop up later, then I'll worry about getting the OBD2 port working. Um, it really came down to a time issue. I should have less time into doing it this way than I would have into fixing that OBD2 port and moving on. Granted, the OBD2 port could have just been a, uh, could just be a bad fuse or something as simple as that. But uh, that would still require me to spend some time on the service information figuring out what fuse it is. It's taking me longer to make this video than it did to diagnose this truck. Once upon a time we didn't have cars that had onboard diagnostic that was capable of telling you which cylinder was misfiring. So I went mildly old school, not totally old school. You can use this on a carbureted vehicle, you can use this on an OBD1 vehicle but I went a little bit old school and that is a thermometer, a infrared thermometer. So what I did is I started the truck up. Here, I'll show you. It's cooled off a little bit now, but what you can see if I move this thing stuff out of the way is you've got eight individual exhaust runners, four on each side. So you can clearly see the three here. The fourth one is like straight underneath this. So all I did is I started this up and I used my infrared heat gun and you should be able to see a little laser. I'm not sure if that'll actually show up on film or not. And I just temp checked all eight of these exhaust manifold ports or all the exhaust ports at the manifold as it was running. Um, what I came up with was, and I started on this side. So the longer it took me, the more temperature was built. So it started out pretty cold, but I could tell that cylinder number one was firing and making heat. And I could go through the whole line and they were all making heat and firing. And then I came over to the passenger side and I did the same thing. And this one's harder to see over here, but I also got down in here and I had to actually get down in. And I temp checked all of these ones. I started up here at the front at cylinder number two and went back to cylinder number eight. And when I got back to cylinder number eight, it was not hot enough. So it had a little bit of heat. So even the cylinders that are not running will build a little bit of heat from just compressing the air and also from radiant heat from the, uh, the rest of the exhaust, especially back there in eight where it's got the exhaust from two, four, and six all blowing past it but it was not it was not hot it was warm a little bit it was a little bit warmer than outside air or, you know the the temperature in the temperature in the building but it was not hot 
So if I looked at, I think at that point, cylinder number six was up to about 175 degrees. Um, cylinder number eight was at about 100. So then I went back across the whole line up here and the, the other three on this bank were getting up close to the 200 degree mark and cylinder number eight was just over 100. So what that does is that tells me that I do not have good fire coming out of cylinder number eight. So what I did is I disconnected the spark plug wire. This, and this gets harder to do on newer cars, but on this O2, it's fairly easy because it's got what they call a coil near plug. And the coil near plug has short wires that run from the coil. I plugged in my spark plug tester. I ran a ground wire. So I ran, it, ran this jumper wire from here over to the alternator bracket for a good ground. I started the truck up and this thing was jumping like crazy. So I had good spark coming out of this cylinder. Um, then I put this back together. I just disconnected the coil real quick and it changed nothing. So the coil, this cylinder was not contributing. I disconnected the coil that took the fire away from the the spark plug and it ran exactly the same as it did before so that confirmed to me that cylinder number eight was dead but it does have spark so the next thing that i did is i removed the spark plug but i can look at this plug and when it came out and it's dried off a little bit now but when it came out it was wet with gas which means that the injector is at least giving it fuel. I don't know if it's the proper amount, but it's giving it fuel. And then if you look at this plug, actually that's different. Oh, check that out. I didn't notice that before. I'm not sure if you can see it. This electrode is loose in the center. This plug's bad. Um, I didn't see that before, but that makes me 100% confident in this. So it needs a spark plug, that's it. Um, but one of the things that I noticed when I pulled it, there it is. So this, this porcelain here is moving around loose, which means that it's probably arcing down inside this base. Um, so that would cause a misfire, because you're sitting there, the porcelain's not letting the arc jump and be seen by anything else. It's probably arcing inside of here, and we're done. But I didn't notice that until literally just now while I'm making this video. So my next step was to run a compression test on it. So I threaded my compression tester in, cranked this motor over, I disconnected the fuel pump. Uh, I, I took the fuel pump relay out so that it would crank and not start. So I cranked this and we had a little over 150 PSI on this cylinder, which is honestly not the greatest on a modern engine um but it's it's within a range that i'm not worried about it so it's got decent enough comp it's got enough compression that it should be contributing and it's not so i'm making this video while i'm waiting for spark plugs uh i guess i'll finish it up after i get spark plugs installed i'm gonna put the one in to verify that it works and then I'll probably do the other seven as well. So now I've got the new spark plug in. I haven't touched the other seven yet, but I've got the number eight spark plug replaced. The misfire is gone. And, and that'll be it for this video. That's somewhat of an old school technique. You can find use a uh, infrared thermometer to find a misfiring cylinder on pretty much anything with exposed individual exhaust runners. Um, there are some other ways to find this and I'll go through those with you in some other videos I'm sure I don't really have any plans to make one right now But I'm sure the time will come where I'll show you how to do this on a distributor style vehicle I'm sure the time will come where I'll have some time to show you some easy ways to check Check for misfires or cylinder contribution on a carbureted Distributor type vehicle as well, but for right now this thing is all set. I've still got a little bit more to do on it as far as some of the other things that were uh, wrong. Now, one of, the, one of the issues with this is I am not going to be able to clear the codes. So the check engine light is going to stay on. And this kind of comes down to the, what, 
how much do you want to spend in the repair how much time how much money all that stuff so anyway um that's it thanks for watching hit the subscribe button and i'll see you later I know I already wrapped the video, but this just popped into my brain. Um, the whether it's worth going through the check engine light or not, there's another video that either is maybe up or will be up soon, or it may take me a while to get to it. But it's a truck that's two years newer than this that is in just phenomenal condition. That truck, we spent a quite a bit of extra time, labor time, trying to figure out what exactly was causing the malfunction whereas this one it's like yeah it's it's, run, it's running good we'll call it good and it comes down to what the truck is and what the value of the truck is uh, this thing being as rusty as it is it runs it drives four-wheel drive works that's pretty much a minimum of twelve to fifteen hundred dollars at this point and unfortunately this one is probably not worth a ton more than that because it is rough the other truck that i did the other video on is a under 100,000 mile duramax beautiful condition um that one's worth a lot of money so it's worth taking a little bit more time to make sure all the check engine lights and all that stuff is out i guess realistically i should probably do some videos on that kind of stuff as well but that's where we're at so I already said goodbye, but hit the subscribe button. Thanks for watching.